Hi everybody, here we are. It is turn four, and let's get her done. All right, we have the Continentals. The Americans have the first turn, and we're trying to look at how to capture this area right over here and take this little uh, plantation place right there. So that is the goal. And right now our forces are kind of scattered out. And we still even have more uh, troops showing up back here at the very end. You can see them right at the back of the map there. So let's just go with it. Now, we have this force right here that's planning on flanking. They got a route here. They can go one, two, three, four, five, six. They can get to roughly here. Follow this route through here. To get to here and that will bypass a lot of these troops that are sitting over there and i think that's a good goal is to get or even possibly go to right here and the next turn mosey on even farther uh the problem is is that we don't want to get too close where they can come in and cut you off and then engage you and take you out beforehand because we got to worry about these forces right through here doing that so it may be better to come around and take this route through the backfield, back through, way back and scary. Come down through here, down, and then come back around and up through that way. And it was, it's always a good thing to, because they're not very strong units. They're, I think their whole goal, these use these guys, is for flanking. Being a cav officer myself, I can understand bypassing your dug-in troops where it is. You know, you got all these guys right here. Never good to send your cav into a head-on. Go around the backfield. Get into the reserve. Go on a nice little excursion in the back. And go convoy raiding. Yep, that's the plan. All right. And we got these guys here. I think it might be better to put them someplace where we wait for our forces. I think if you engage too soon, it's never, you know, this trickling your troops in one at a time is just a recipe for disaster. So, let's just start off here. I think we'll move Lee's Legion. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to move them way down. We even got it. there. We go. Went one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll put them right there too. Now, what we do with these guys? We got the pensive palmetto foot and Lee's light legion. Well, I think I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Go right there. And put those guys right there too. Not engaging it. Because these, from my think, thinking, it looks like there's a whole bunch of troops right there. You know, never a good deal to take these guys on. And by putting myself there, that might uh, give us a little bit of time while these guys move up. Let's put this guy... Uh, these guys off the side for the moment. We need the North Carolina militia. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they can go up to eight on the road, but you can't march into can right to there. So we'll put them there. Put the rifles right there, and move the troops right there. And we have one. Two, Four. I think that's let's see one, two, three. Yeah, we can put Swamp Fox in there. There we go. Swamp Fox is now right there. All right. So now we got Nathaniel Green. We don't want to get him too far forward yet. All right, then we have artillery. One, two, three, four, five. Now, let's go to here. 
put the rifles there and in there. So right now we got a strength of one, four, five. So we got strength of one, two, three, four, five, five. These guys all the way back in the backfield. I got movement four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we got a Washington's Dragoons. These guys do well when they're attacked by themselves. Can't go there because right here the strength six. Again, I think we got a strength six there, and we got a strength five right here. And that is pretty much everything for the Americans. So they, let's move on to the British, the British side of the game. All right. So right now. We have these guys sitting up here, kind of parked. We got these guys here parked. And we're not sure at the moment if anybody's going to be coming down the pipeline down here. We don't see anybody, so I think they're going to park themselves right there for one more turn, just to make sure. And then we have to look at these guys. Let's see here. What would they do? They see a juicy target right there. That they might go after. Get an, an early attack in. And let's do. Which, who are we going to move for? I think we'll leave these guys. I think we'll leave Coffin where he's at because he has a strength six, I believe. Yeah, strength six, strength four. We could get in contact with those guys right there. So we can move these, these to here, and that's easily get a one to one attack. And we can move to here. I can move here and join up with these guys here on one stack and I think we probably get a two to one maybe on these guys in the woods so one thing I need to look at is combat effects that's forced fire is a minus one okay and so if we do rifle fire on them there's a minus one so I don't think we have any rifles here. I think the only rifles I have are up north. Yep. Cannon fire. Yep, no rifles. Alright, so the only rifles we have are these guys right there. So what we'll do is we're going to put the... Uh, Charleston horse right there and then we're going to move in the light infantry with them and then march banks with them there skinners here and then will the Irish buffs go there and let's see we got one two three four and go one, two, one, two. And bring Coffin into there. And the cannon here. Set ourselves up with a position there. Now, big decision. We're in close combat I think 
with look at the all right we've done the initiative phase we've done the movement phase nothing to worry about with rally defensive artillery fire I, there's no artillery here i don't think there is oh there is riff rifles uh, rifle fire phase both players may conduct rifle fire with their rifled units rifle fire is considered simultaneous there's rifles on the continental side determined to hit cross-referencing rifles okay ranges adjacent one firing point we need to roll a seven because i think that's the only rifles we have in that stack side here yeah no modifier with there it's just a zero all right target is light infantry all right they're gonna pick a target they have to pick a target let's do who is their best best shot at uh, let's go with these guys they're gonna shoot at the 96 these guys right here well wait a minute i guess it doesn't really matter they're too all right they're gonna pick these guys right there uh target is line infantry not in the force uh, artillery rifle unit first time in the game so they're plus one all right all right so they they have a plus one modifier they need to roll a six or better to hit the well, way I can see it, I rolled a seven. Seven. So we have a seven. Now we gotta see look at the damage table. Uh, okay, rifle fire versus non artillery. Rolled the six. Um is there any modifiers with this? If I roll, what is that little asterisk? One, oh, okay, that's a step loss. One step loss. And you gain a plus one. All right, that's what that means. Okay. All right. Let's just see. All right. Ooh, a nine. A nine was rolled, so they lose one step loss. Oh, they are nothing. So they just gun down with the rifle fire the 96 district. They got shot down. Nice shooting, Tex. All right. So that was... The uh, rifle fire phase adjacent to hit modifiers to hit scoring. Right. If a hit is rolled modified on the rifle tail, unmodified roll. Okay, make any arm morale equivalent. Okay, um, I do believe. Um, Oh, morale adjustment. Okay, so we the Americans gain are up to fifteen, and the um, inflicted a step loss of minus one, and so that results in bump my thing. So the British morale is down to I think twelve. That's it. That's how it works. As I'm stepping through all this, I think that's how it worked. All right. So, now we move on to the next phase, I think. Close combat phase. Design, uh, designated all attacks. Players must attack with his units that are adjacent. All right. So, we're going to go with this one here first. They have a two... 
five, seven versus two, three, five, six. So that's a one to one. All right, so we got a one to one attack. Consult the chart. We do have some extra charts here that were printed off. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, attacker's points is seven versus defender is six. So one to one. He's got this chart right here. Seven versus six is still one to one. All right. Now, let's look at our uh, random solitary tactics table. This little bugger right here. Um, we have we have they have a leader. Where do you go? Probably had a leader here. Where do you go? Oh, there he is. We got coffin. The one modifier. All right. Uh, engage with the leader. All right. Enemy has no leader. Enemy has no leader. Enemy has no leader. Enemy has no leader. Enemy has a leader. Engage with leader. Enemy has a leader. All right. Flank not possible. We do have an open spot there and an open spot there. So flank is possible. Engage with leader. Flank possible. Okay, there we go. Withdraw plausible. Yes, we can withdraw to here. All right, so let's just roll the die. Okay, just a second. The, I think we got the same circumstance. We have open flank here. Oh, we got to pick a target. All right, who's going first? Who's our leader? Our initial attacker will be... Uh, these, 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 these. Uh, make these guys right here. The 63rd right there. Those are our, our main attack because they got a plus one. All right. And the these guys will be rifles. Let's make. Ooh. That's not good. Well, kind of sucks, but I think uh, we'll have to make Swamp Fox our main guy. I don't think I like that idea, but that's what we're going to get. Okay. Um. Engage with leader, flank possible, withdrawal plausible. Yes, because they can withdraw there. All right, I'm going to roll both these dice at the same time just to see who, because it's the same chart for both of these guys. All right, so we got a, I got to re-roll these because there is, I'm going to need to roll D D8 and I rolled a 10, so I got to re-roll that one, so a 7. Turn flank for the British and attack in echelon with the Americans. All right, so. Okay, let's look at the effects chart. Uh, defender is attack in echelon and turn flank. All right, looks like it's a plus one attacker. That that reads correctly. So since they are attacking from the flank, I guess that gives them the, the possibility of turning the flank and versus the attack in echelon. All right, so let's just see what happens. That's one to one attack. We got a one to one attack. Right here on this chart right there. And all right, our modifiers. 
we do have a plus one right there. Uh, they have to get a plus one for the turn it turning the flank, so that they got a plus two for the bridge. So the worst right now they can roll is a two. The Americans, okay, the both commanders negate each other, so we ignore that. And then I said Swamp Fox would be mine, so that's a plus one. So it, those two negate each other. So it's just a plus one to the die roll. And we'll see what happens here. And, oh, not good. A little zero. So zero, which is a zero. Plus one is one. We'll look on the chart. Uh, okay, so we rolled a D. Uh, that's the attacker side, I believe. Yes, D. Uh, just, I think D is disrupted. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the attacker unit, which was this one, which I picked, is now disrupted. And I think with a disruption, you have to fall back one. Put that there. And let's fall back to here. There's our fallback spot to there. That was not what we expected. Uh, well, we'll move on. All right, so here we have a defense of three. No leader. There's our leader right there. That's going into the attack. Uh, we're going to have the light infantry be our primary attackers. All right, so we have a strength of six, eight, ten, eleven versus three. Look at that. Attack strength of 11 versus 3. Alright, so we got a 3 to 1 attack. This could be bad. Alright. We'll have the Lee's Light Legion be the primaries. And I said the uh, Light Infantry. Where'd they go? There's our Light Infantry will be my primaries. Alright, so there's right there. Um, hmm. Let's go look at our chart. We're going to the gauge without a leader. That will be the defender. They don't have a leader. We are engaging the British. Do have a leader. Enemy has no leader. Flank is possible. Because we have a flank here and a flank there. Gauge with leader, a leader has no flank possible, withdrawal is plausible. Alright. Okay. So the Americans roll a seven. So they're gonna skirmish. The Americans are skirmish. The British are going to turn the flank. Hmm. Skirmish versus turn flank. Let's see what happens. Okay, defender is skirmish. Turn flank. Minus one. Well, that's not looking good already. All right, so there's a minus one right there for combat effects. All right, so the we had the... Um, so right now we got a plus two, plus three, minus one. So that's a plus two versus the plus one. So they got a plus one to the die roll. Three to one plus one. That's what I'm looking at right there. Let's roll the die and see what happens. Uh, oh, that's not good. That's a one. A little bloody one. Um, three to one. Plus one, so that's a two. A three to one. Retreat. Man. Attacker retreat. So 
the light infantry have to fall back to there. Retreat one. Uh, I think there's a retreat. Okay. Where does a retreat cause a disruption? Or is that disordered? I can't remember. I have to take a look at that. Once I... Right now, I'm going to throw a disruption on for the moment. And then I'll come back at, in, in between turns and figure out that. What a retreat does. I think it causes a disruption and they got to fall back. At least one. Okay. That attack did not go the way it was supposed to. Okay, the British turn. Not looking good. They went and did their attack, expecting to beat back these colonials. And these guys did a number on them. Not what I expected. Well, let's just see. Grab both dice. Um. Right now, they both have high morale, so there's a plus one, so that negates each other out. And we'll roll the die and just see what's going to happen with uh, turn five. Well, it looks like it is four and an eight. Looks like the Americans... The Colonials will have the initiative again. So that is going to be interesting. See what happens with that. All right. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll be back with turn five in a little bit. All right. Okay. I looked in the information uh, just to let you know. Uh, put this just on here to let to figure out which one that was retreated. Uh, when you get a retreat result, you have to retreat one hex. So they were here, they had to retreat to there. And everybody that was in the retreating party, which are these two stacks, have to make a morale test or fall back. All right, so Lear does not have to worry about it. They can voluntarily fall back if they want to. Now uh, we got Charleston Horse. Uh, they have a plus one, and I think the army morale is one, so plus two. If they roll a nine, they're good. We'll let the leader stay there. And then we have the Irish buffs. They have a plus one, plus the morale of the army. Roll the seven, they are good. And then we have the Skinner's Greens. Ooh, roll a zero. Uh, plus two, so they failed. So the Skinner Greens have to fall back to here. So they retreated. Um, I don't think they're, if I remember right, if I'm reading this correctly, they just fall back. Uh, gee, they didn't say anything about them becoming disrupted or anything. They just retreat backwards. So, yeah, okay. Yep, that's it. So, this unit here had to fall back here. This unit fell back to here, which is not good, considering that the British had lost the initiative. And when these guys here, they were hit with a disruption, they have to retreat three. So, one, two, three. That's why they're way back here. So... They're hitting in the backfield. All right, so that is it. That's everything uh, when it comes to that turn. So we are officially moving on to turn five, and it's the American's turn. All right, we'll be back. <laughs> 